All right. All right. We may have another good show. Maybe. Because we know with American Horror Story, things can start off pretty good. And then they become a hell no. Hey, what's up and hello? This is the Chris Nicole giving you my views on life, love, and the world of entertainment through my eyes. And this is my review on American Horror Story Season 12, Delicate, Episode 1, Multiply Thy Pain. All right, so we start off seeing Anna who is sleeping in bed. And while she's sleeping, another hand embraces her and Anna kind of holds on to that hand that, you know, is touching her. And I'm thinking it's her spouse, but she all of a sudden wakes up and freaks out, turns around and sees that it's not her spouse. It's some person in her bed that is a figure that's kind of like wrapped in black. We don't know if it's a he or a she. We can't see the person's face. Next thing you know, Anna becomes superwoman and she starts chasing this figure around her apartment. But the figure gets away. So Anna calls the police and she's like, you guys need to come ASAP. Someone broke into my apartment. I live in Brooklyn Heights. And baby, if anybody knows anything about New York, Brooklyn Heights it's expensive as hell. The top of the top in Brooklyn. So they're fussing with her or she's arguing with them on the phone. And I'm like, these police officers don't argue with anyone who lives in Brooklyn Heights. I mean, they probably can own the precinct. It's not happening, but okay. So while she's arguing with the police, Next thing you know, she sees a picture on the ground that looks like it's a picture of an embryo and it's torn in half. And we see that there's blood around the picture. She picks up the picture. Next thing you know, she has blood all over her hands. Okay. And then at that point, I guess we're supposed to assume that it represents her having a miscarriage maybe, but then she screams in terror. Like she just screams at that point. And the next thing you know, we see a uh, actual title that says one week earlier from that point. So one week earlier. So Anna is speaking to her husband and she is late for her IVF appointment. And while she's walking out of her apartment building, she sees a lady that's dressed in all black and red, and the lady is looking at a nest. And when the lady sees that Anna is there, she walks away. So Anna, being nosy, she decides to see what the lady was looking at, and it's a nest, but it looks like little baby embryos or baby eggs in there, I suppose. So at that point, I was like, okay, uh, you need to tell somebody to clean that up. Like, I don't know if this is witchcraft. Like, I don't know what this is, but it looks like to just randomly have that there and ain't nobody saying something. Mm, okay. So she rushes and takes the train because, of course, she is, you know, trying to rush to her appointment. And then she gets off at her stop and she sees her billboard of the actual um, a billboard of herself on one of the buildings in New York. And she's an actress. Now, from my understanding, it seems like if she has that much success, she's not a new actress, or maybe she is, but she's already super late for her appointment. And instead of her rushing to her appointment and maybe coming to that billboard later, she decides to pause and take a picture of the billboard so that at that point I said okay we have some representation here of her choosing either her career or her family 
That's that moment. Are you choosing fame or family? Which one? Because you're already late and you want to take time to take a picture of this billboard. It's not like the billboard won't be there when you get out. So she rushes in to the fertility clinic for her procedure. And she says that she's already had this procedure twice. So it's very clear at this point that this couple is having infertility problems. It seems like it's more of her than him, maybe. And so with that, they put her in a room for the procedure. And great job, cinematographers, set designers on this room, because it is creepy as hell. I was like, who in the hell will want to have any procedure in a room like that? So with that, she is doing her procedure, and everyone is literally um wrapped like they're they're in red. And to me, this this red is supposed to represent blood, I'm assuming. Um, which again, great job for the set designers, the designers, because everything when it comes to American Horror Story typically has some type of representation. So after the procedure is done, um, she is in the waiting room and because she's a big star, you know, people are looking at her like, you know, that, why is she in there? And I find it interesting that two things, one just because she's a big star doesn't mean that she wouldn't have issues with having a baby. But of course, people assume stars are just perfect and they don't have any issues. But the other thing is typically big stars are not going out of the front of the building like everyone else. They're typically going the back way. So they can avoid these type of things. But I guess. So at that point, She's leaving and this older lady comes in draped in black and she's like, I know you. And Anna with her big ego was like, yeah, thanks for watching. And the lady's like, watching? You are her. I know you. And Anna's like, what the hell is wrong with this lady? So Anna leaves out and while she leaves out, this creepy lady is taking pictures of her as she's leaving out. I'm guessing she's not going to use those pictures for Instagram. But anywho, so Anna walks outside and she greets her husband. And the same lady that was in black and red that was in front of her apartment building is now waiting for her when she leaves the fertility clinic. Anna sees her again and she literally is looking at her husband like this lady was in front of our building earlier. And the husband just brushes it off. Now, me personally, if that lady is the same lady that was in front of the building and she's staring at them, I would have been a little bit more concerned. But, you know, the husband's like, you know, okay, well, it is what it is. And Anna's like, you don't think she's kind of like stalking me, right? And he was like, I don't think you got a stalker yet, you know, but it is what it is. So at lunch, Anna and her husband have a cute moment dreaming about, you know, their future baby. And then when she gets home, she places, I, I don't know, it's, it's whatever those pill capsules are that she has to leave in the refrigerator. You guys let me know what the actual name of them are. And let me know for people who maybe have been at a fertility clinic who doesn't mind, you know, they don't mind sharing. Is this actually the process? Because um, I didn't know what that was for, but we get the whole, whole view of it. She takes them out of the refrigerator and she puts one up her, you know, bougine area. And with that, when she goes to the sink to wash her nasty hands, of course, she all of a sudden sees there's like a gray hair or maybe one or two gray hairs, and she kind of flips out about that. And I don't know if when she put the capsule in her, all of a sudden her hair turned gray, or she just noticed it. But the fact that they wanted to focus on that, my gut is telling me that as soon as she put the capsule in her, all of a sudden she had some gray hair. So <sighs> then we see Kim Kardashian. And Kim Kardashian is plain Kim Kardashian. I'm sorry, but every acting role she has had 
all I see is her playing her. It's not acting. She's like playing herself. So she's like the asshole publicist. And, you know, one thing I will give the actual um, people who created this season, I love the views and maybe because I've truly missed New York. And, you know, what Kim had on, her suit was fly. So I'll definitely give them that. And I love the view of this scene. But, you know, she's being the publicist. And she's like, I need for you to sign all of this stuff for your fans. Oh, and Andy Cohen wants to interview you without anyone next to you in the chair. It's just you and him. And I was like, why is Andy Cohen getting a shout out in this show? Like, Andy, Ryan Murphy are y'all friends. Like, it's just a random person to mention. And so she's like, yeah. She was like, yes, I would love to. But in the process, she sees that that same Thursday, she's supposed to have her embryo transfer. But she says she'll do it. So next thing you know, Kim, because that's what I'm going to call her, because she's just playing herself. She says, oh, you need to sign this doll for one of your fans. And so... I guess it's a doll of what she used to, I guess a show she was on when she was younger. And that's supposed to be a doll of her, I suppose. And Kim says, oh, the fan wants you to sign the body, not sign the package, not sign the clothes, sign the body. And so Anna's like, I cannot put my signature on the torso of this doll. And, you know, Kim is like, well, put your initials on it. So she puts her initials on the torso. And I was like, this is a damn doll doll, if you know what I mean. Like, this is a doll that's going to haunt her. This doll represents her. Maybe her soul is in this doll. So she puts her initials on it. Next thing you know, that damn doll moves when no one is looking. And the damn doll ends up being in Anna's purse. And Kim is like, uh, Anna, like, why do you have the freaking doll in your purse? And Anna's like, I didn't do it. And Kim's like, oh my gosh, like, you need to take a nap. You're tired. So with that, she ends up missing with, if she ends up missing with, she ends up meeting with her husband. And again, it's making me miss New York. They're in the park. Love the views. And Anna, again, talks about her issues about not getting pregnant and how from age 14 to 30, she didn't even want to have kids. Now that she's ready to have kids, she can't have them. And so her husband is like, look, it's hard for everyone. And pretty what it pretty much means it's also hard on the man, too. And when you truly have a good man, he's going through it with you just like you are. Granted, we're the ones who have to carry the baby, but, you know, he's there to support. And so she says, you mean that about Adeline or Adeline? And I was like, who the hell is that? Like, did he cheat on her? But we find out that Adeline or Adeline, whatever her name is, she apparently is uh, the husband's ex-wife. And apparently she was unalived in an accident, I guess. Um, But they really don't explain what happened yet. So she asked her husband, did he ever try to have kids with his ex-wife? And he said, no, it wasn't in the cards for them. Next thing you know, a black baby spider, which I'm assuming is a black widow, is on her hair and the husband gets it out of her hair. Now, my question is, did that baby black widow spider land on her? Or did it come out of her? We shall see. So next, they get back home to their apartment. And the little white capsule little thing that's supposed to stay in the refrigerator, it's on the counter. And Anna's like, I put it in the refrigerator. And so with that, I'm like, there is some spirit or some person that does not want her to have a child. And I'm trying to figure out, is it his ex-wife? Is it her spirit? Or what the heck is going on? But I'm still intrigued. I'm like, I'm with it. I'm with it, Ryan Murphy. I'm with it. So then we have a scene of this annoying, no-filter friend who just randomly brings up the ex-Adeline. 
and why. And then she also goes into this whole nonsense about how, why anyone would want a child. So first they're having dinner and she talks about Adeline and how she feels her spirit and she's so missed. Then they go into the bathroom and then she's talking about how they need to move their seat because there is a child next to them that is constantly complaining to his parents and how would it, why would anyone want a child, okay? And she's saying all of this in front of Anna who desperately wants a child. So in the process, I, I forgot if Anna compliments the lipstick or whatever, but she gives Anna her lipstick and she's like, here you go. And we get a close up on a lipstick. So I said, okay, this lipstick is going to play into something later on. Got it. So with that, next thing you know, she gets a call from the doctor and the doctor is saying, hey, your embryos are ready. You know, let's put them in on Thursday. And she already had it on her calendar, but Anna's like, no, can we possibly do it Friday? And the doctor's like, look, I told you the sooner the better with these. And she was like, I know, I know, but you know, I have Andy Cohen on Thursday. Can we do it Friday? And so the doctor's saying Friday. Now, my thing is, I don't know if one day makes a big difference. You guys let me know, but it seems like there's urgency there. Um, but the husband looks annoyed because again, she's choosing her career over the family that she claims she desperately wants. And so she ends up going home and she is like in her phone looking up things about herself and her husband's ex-wife. And I'm like, I don't understand why people do that to themselves where they look up things that people are saying about them. But with that, while she's on her phone, she sees on her calendar that her appointment is Friday at 11 a.m. But literally right before her eyes, the calendar switches and says that her appointment is at noon. So she's thinking that someone hacked into her account. And so she changes her appointments. She calls the doctor the next day and said, I need for you to change my appointment. Someone hacked into my phone. I don't care what time you give me, but can you just please change my appointment? So he says, okay, Friday at 10 a.m. So this time she decides that she is actually going to write her appointment on a post-it note and put it on the cabinet. So then that way she's not putting it in her phone because she's afraid someone has hacked into her phone. So she ends up going to the Andy Cohen interview, Andy Cohen interview. And, you know, yeah. So she ends up having a great interview until she sees the older lady that creeped her out at the fertility clinic saying, I know you, I know who you are. The lady is in the actual audience. So she freaks out a little bit while she, and yes, Andy Cohen was actually on the show. That's what I'm saying. Like Andy Cohen and Ryan Murphy must be really good friends. So she almost freaks out and ruins the interview. But next thing you know, in the dressing room, Kim kind of plays it off like, you're fine. Like it was still a great interview. And then guess what we see in her dressing room? We see her doll in her dressing room that same doll but it's not the same doll with her initials on the torso this time it's the doll but this doll instead of her initials on the torso has a x on the torso okay and so anna is freaking out she was like where did this doll come from and kim is like ebay baby they're coming back and i'm like okay Yeah. So instead of her taking that doll and taking it to God, because at this point she needs some real prayer, she decides to throw the doll away. And I was like, child, I don't know if that was a good idea. So in the car, she's actually looking up her name again and trying to see what people are saying about her. And next thing you know, we see the photo that the old lady took in the fertility clinic and is posted on some type of blog. So Anna gets home and she hears someone in her house. So she pulls a stabber, like most horror movies, they pull out a stabber. And she sees the lady in black and red in the, in the stabber's reflection, in the knife's reflection. 
And instead of her keeping the knife in her hand, she looks at it again to make sure the lady's not in the reflection. And it's just her. And she places the knife down. And I'm like, really? That's smart. Great. And so with that, she checks the refrigerator to make sure that little, you know, those capsules are in there. And then she looks on the cabinet and she sees the post-it note that she put on the cabinet has been torn in half like her embryo picture. So I was just like, child, like seriously. So at that point, she calls her husband and she's like, where the F are you? And he was like, excuse me. I'm at my opening. We talked about this. And she's like, okay, fine, fine. I, I'm coming. I'm coming to your opening. So she gets dressed and she decides to put on Talia, the negative Nancy at the restaurant. She decides to put on her lipstick. And I'm like, first of all, you're supposed to be famous and rich. You don't have your own lipstick. You don't have a makeup artist. Like, why are you wearing her lipstick? You don't know where her lips have been. And her nasty, negative lips, the filth that came out of her mouth. I'm like, are you transferring negative energy? Like, there has to be something about her lips and her negative spirit that's about to be transferred on to you. Sorry if you hear growling. Little upset dog there. At the opening, Anna is looking at this painting and it's a painting that appears to just be, hell, I don't know what it is, but the damn painting is red, okay? But she hears a baby crying in the picture. Next thing you know, this lady comes up and says she used her own menstrual blood for the damn painting. What? That's art, huh? And so this other creeper, the artist who used her blood for this painting says, oh, wow, you never wear red. And she's talking about Anna's lipstick. She was like, I'm a huge fan of, of you and your husband. Oh gosh, that was a creepy line because I'm like, how in the heck would you know that she's never worn red or hell red lipstick? Like you watch her that much where you would know that. And of course it creeps Anna out because it damn sure creeped me out. And then her husband walks up behind her and touches her and Anna screams. And she's like, oh my gosh, you scared me. And her hubby is like, let's go outside and let's, let's go. And Anna's like, what? No. And he's like, Shh. and she was like, don't shush me. And he's like, you're not well, you need to go. And she starts to look around and she notices that people are looking at her. And he's pretty much like, look, don't make no damn scene. You already got enough attention as is. You're a huge star. This is my night. Don't F it up. So the next day for the embryo transfer, during the transfer, <sighs> again, creepy room that they have for this transfer. The old creepy lady comes into her dream, her vision, and let's just say this scene is disgusting, so I'm not going to describe it. Watch that scene for yourself. And then Anna wakes up and sees her husband, and she's actually in bed at home. And he's making sure she's okay. He has placed the embryo picture on her um, on her nightstand and a picture of Anna's mom. And I'm assuming that is Anna's mom holding Anna, okay? And so with that, we're back at the scene, the first scene that we saw in this episode where she's in bed sleeping and someone touches her and Anna holds on to the hand and she chases this person out of her apartment. And at first, when we see the first scene of this, we are thinking that she's covered in blood and her hands are covered in blood, but we see the lipstick on the floor. So it's like, okay, is it lipstick or is it the blood which one is it 
And then she gets an alert on her phone saying that she has a new appointment. And the alert says, baby, look in the mirror. So she goes to the mirror in her bedroom and written in lipstick or blood, it says, don't do it, Anna. And then the episode goes off. I must say, if this, this was a good episode, it, it kept my attention. I liked it. It had the suspense. It had the thriller element. It had the horror element. Let me, let me know what you think about it. Um, if you actually like this show, um, if you love this show, like some of us do, what did you rate this episode? I would say I would give it a solid A. I would give it a solid A. It was actually a pretty good episode. I am just hoping, I am hoping this season stays just as strong, okay? I'm begging that it stays strong because we all know, especially that last season, they had me maybe the first episode, second episode. Then after that, I was like, where the hell are they going with this? But this one seems pretty good. So let me know what you think. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on my next video. Toodles.